and uh, seven days in which to practice the uh, entire 1,500 miles. Yeah. Um, what have you done today? Uh, we've been in Northern Ireland for the last yesterday and today. And wh about what mileage did you drive today then? Um, I suppose we must have driven six or seven hundred miles. Yeah. So, Does know. it look tricky so far? Uh, tricky enough. It yeah. always is, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what was your reaction to it, Roman? Well, it's been a pretty hectic two days, Gay. Um, we have a, a very restricted time for practicing um, in these all, all the rallies in Ireland. We're allowed to practice from nine to six each day, mm. and uh, you've got to cram as much as possible into those hours. Mm. So, as Billy said, we drove about six or seven hundred miles today, and we will every day until the rally starts. Yeah. Now, RTE will be giving an evening, nightly report on the whole proceedings during the terms of the rally. But is it true? Did Michael Carroll say to me that on the ch Monday, Tuesday, you're driving through the night? Is that so? That's right. We drive for a period of 36 hours, practically non-stop. We you stop for meals and that. Start, okay, starting at what time? Just take me over there. We start at um, about 11 o'clock on Monday morning. Yeah. And we don't finish until something like 12 o'clock the next day. And, and there's no sleep in there? No. Just, just food? That's right. And, and where do you start and where do you finish? We start you in hope. Waterford. In we Waterford. hope, yeah, exactly. You hope. Yeah. We start in Waterford. We have um, a supper halt in Galway and we end up back in Belfast having travelled right up the west coast of the country. And then across? Then across. Wow, that's some driving. What I can't reconcile with you, Billy, is that, that you have this thing about farming, which always seems to me to be a rather peaceful occupation, and then you go out and do the crazy things you do in that yoke. Uh, it's a case of compulsion these days, I think, uh, okay, because um, <clears throat> I ran into in problems with the farming. And um, um, really, I, I had a... Uh, profession that I, I revived uh, to, to help my farming and that's yeah. uh, why really why I came back to it yeah. and I'm, I think uh, in fact it's a strange thing that I've, I'm driving better than I've ever driven in my whole career and with a lot more commitment um, in a strange sort of but way. Well, why is that do you reckon? Well I, I, a lot of people that know me fairly well say that I only work well under pressure and uh, I think it's the pressure working really and I feel I have to succeed and that's um, um, I have a reputation for being a driver who is a lot of natural ability but uh, not enough aggression or um, um, <coughs> not wanting to win badly enough well now I really need to win and I think that was what I needed <laughs> for the last 15 years so. yes, call them the bug on your back that's, that's what right. it's called yeah. so it all started in Mill Street then in County Cork and, and, and at what age did this dreadful bug hit you? I said it must have been about five <laughs> and what did and, you do uh, about it at five years of age? Uh, well I probably started driving on my father's knee and um, then I used to sneak the old car from the garage and take it. At five? <laughs> well, no, maybe when I was eight or nine. Really? Yeah, I'd sit, sit on a cushion and uh, push the seat forward. Yeah. Uh, mind you, some people say I still need a cushion when I'm driving. <laughs> but, um, anyway. I tell you what, have you, no, no, nobody in this studio, I'm quite sure nobody has sat behind the wheel of a rally car at full speed. But we, Michael Carroll, put a camera behind this fella some time ago. And uh, you can roll it there, Colette, please. Now, this is what it looks like from the car and the countdown from roll, all of that sort of thing. Listen to this. Take the lights down for this. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Easy right over crest, 500 end of four. Bump, play right, long, quick left. Crest flat, 30, quick right, one half. Quick left over crest, 60. Easy left, 80, pink. Right flat, 80, easy left, press flat. 200, pink, marker. Easy right, easy left, 300, kinks. Easy left, 80, kinks, shed. Easy left, press flat, 40, quick right. One half. Right flat, 600, end of wire fence on left. Right over slight press, one half. Press flat, 100. Crest 100 ash tree mid right. No, Crest 100 ash tree mid right. Very long, quick left, one half. Crest left 30, turn hairpin left. 40. Easy right, 300. Slide right, 400. Turn hairpin right, gravel. Turn hairpin left, don't cut, and slow right.
Does that go on all the time? It does, yeah. It sounds terrible, doesn't it? And uh, is your head stuck on a map all that time? Well, it's not a map, Gay. It's, it's exactly what we were doing the last couple of days was making what we call pace notes. Uh, we drive every stage as often as we can, and Billy calls out to me the road as he sees it in his own mind. And I write it down in a shorthand form and then call it back to him um, in the right sequence and at the right time. The so that's exactly with him. My job in his is if, if he makes a mistake, I have to sort it up. But if I make a mistake, um, you're on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> He's on his own. <laughs> and, I've and, out to and, and you're listening through all of this to each other in, in, uh, on headphones. Yeah, we've got an intercom built into our helmets. And uh, we communicate with each other through that because the noise inside a car like that is Awful. quite severe. Awful. But Awful. whatever about wanting to drive like him, I couldn't bear to do what you do. <laughs> I mean, do you ever see the countryside when you're going through it? Well, no, no, you don't really. You just look I up do, instantly. But he I, I see. I always look at the countryside. <laughs> the problem, is, fact, the problem uh, is with him, Gay. He's looking at the way the, 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 all the fields are ploughed and whatever. Right, and taking yeah. note of who's exactly. planting what. And well, who's the, win exactly. the winter wheat is very back for this year. <laughs> 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 are, are, they, are they ahead of us up north? Are they ahead uh, of us no, up north? even further behind. But further behind yeah. up north, are they? Oh, you took all that in, I see. Uh, your safety record is legend, actually. I mean, most people have been around all around the place, but you have a great this, this great reputation for safety. Well, I could see why in that film there. I reckon I could make up about ten seconds in that piece of uh, road there alone if I had another shot at it, you know. So I don't you weren't concentrating, Billy, no, huh? No, I see. I wasn't going quick enough. Oh, that's a very black mark, yes. <coughs> I wasn't but, waving the big yeah. Stick at him, that's the problem. Uh, indeed. Well, I have a little accident on tape for you, or on film. I, I really don't know the details of this accident, but I, all accidents are great, as long as people walk away from them. You can roll it there, Colette, please. It presumably is during the, uh, the rally that, you, that you've won three times so far. Keep your eyes peeled for this. But his pleasure is about to come to a sudden and expensive end of the first run over Kindrum Lake. Miraculously, nobody is hurt, and McDade and Kennedy climb safely from the wreckage, a testament to the safety regulations in rally cars. The approach has been wrong at this 100 mile an hour jump. The Ascona climbs the wall, and thanks to the excellent marshalling by the Donegal Motor Club, no spectators have been hurt. Now, I mean, lads, Face it, lads, does that not scare you a bit now? Come on. It certainly does. Yeah. Does? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, it, well, I mean, it's at the back of your mind all the time, and, um, uh, I mean, to, to a point, it, what happens is within your own control, but uh, because it's a mechanical device, uh, you know, a motor car, it's something can break, of course, and uh, in that case, I'm not sure really what happened, but uh, suspension what, what failure do you, What do you reckon happened? What do you reckon happened there on that one? Well, as it happens, that particular bro, uh, in the last two years in the Donegal Rally, that was used. And I was in an Opel uh, 1984. And I think we must have gone about 10 feet in the air. On that? On that. Uh, it was much too fast, but thank heavens, it came down like a 747. It just touched down front. And uh, we, we got away with it. This year in the Porsche, uh, 85, uh, I braked hard for the bump. and. I still went over too quickly, so it's an incredibly deceptive spot. Um, so you have sympathy so with your man? Absolutely, or, yeah. Or yeah. I think he was, the, he was the unlucky one. Yes. Now, you went off tobacco picking at one stage in your career. When was that? It was 1969. You took off for the States to buy. What was that all about, please? Well, I, I wasted four years of my life at UCC, and that's not a, any condemnation of the institution or anything like that, but uh, I got a degree in commerce, and... Um, I felt I wanted to be independent and do my own thing for a while and stand on my own feet. And uh, I took off to America on a working visa. And of course, it was a great time in the States, unlike now, where any town I walked into, I could have a job within half an hour. Uh, for instance, one night I arrived in San Francisco and uh, I had about 10 bucks in my pocket, I think. And uh, badly in need of a job. So I saw guys across the street with helmets on and they were uh, working jackhammers and digging up the, the pavement. So. I went over to this guy and I said, well, are you hiring any guys next to him? I said, uh, Ed McKenna, you want to see Ed McKenna? And I said, that sounds like my man anyway. <laughs> so off I go down to Brisbane, South San Francisco, and uh, I was on the graveyard shift next day, um, working a jackhammer, building the, uh, what was it, uh, Bay Area Rapid Transport. Oh, yeah. It was the underground from Oakland to San Francisco. Yeah. So that was just one of the many things I did in America. Uh, I drove a combine harvester. 
the tobacco was a weekend job, uh, housing tobacco. And I did all sorts of things. So um, I think it stood to me actually uh, ever, ever since because it was a year when I went there, I knew absolutely nobody. And I had about 50 quid in my pocket, I think, which all went on the first day when I hit New York at 100 degrees or whatever it was and I had to buy summer clothing and that was all gone. And uh, I just had to get a job, which I never had to do before. Yeah. But as I say, it was as easy as falling off a log at that time. Yeah. But, but up to the time you got your sponsorship and, and firms and all of that sort of thing backing you, have you any idea how much money you've spent on this game so far? Well, it's a much different game nowadays. Um, certainly, I wouldn't like to be a youngster going out and trying to, uh, to make a name for himself. At that time, I started with a car that was a, it was a Ford Escort, which had been written off, and I bought for about 150 quid. <laughs> And uh, repaired with the help of many friends and my father in the garage at home. Yes. And um, literally for hundreds of pounds, we had a rally car that was, that was uh, fairly competitive in an international event. Yeah. Where nowadays you're, you're talking vast, vast money. Vast so, money. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not to say I wouldn't like to discourage any aspiring youngsters. Uh, I mean, you've got to start at the bottom in a standard car. And I think if you're good enough, and I think you have to be very good nowadays to make it before a company gets interested in you. And Ronan, do you ever want to drive this thing? Do you ever want to get in behind the wheel? And give yeah. Have you ever seen him drive? <laughs> no, Gay, I've absolutely no interest in driving fast at all. He's even slower than I'm, Gay. <laughs> no interest. But, uh, no, no interest. I never really had. Uh, the two jobs are completely different, as you've probably seen in the film. And um, uh, I've just no interest at all in driving. But uh, I do love co driving. And he's too smooth to be a good driver, okay? Too smooth? Yeah, yeah. Well, all right, we leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed for coming along. We wish you the best of luck. It's starting on Good Friday next weekend, and wherever you live in this country, sometime over the weekend, this rally is going to hit your local area, and you'll see this pair. Well, you won't see them very much. The idea is that you don't see them very much. Anyway, good luck to you both. Have a good time, and please drive safely, or as safely as you can.